So you've got a Milwaukee 8114. Want to do some mods. You don't need to go to a 130 on 124. Let me show you what you really need to do. Welcome back to the channel, folks. If you're new here, uh, glad to have you. You know, there's a lot of uh, YouTubers out there that are showing their big build upgrades. I got a 124, got a 131, and mine's bigger and faster. Well, guess what? They ain't that much better, they ain't that much faster, and every one of those guys has blown their motors sky high. They don't have to do that. Uh, the 114 is powerful enough, and let me show you some other mods. You know, mods, some mods are subjective, some are not. But let me show you some really cool mods to do, especially if you're in hot weather, uh, to make that motor run great. Let's start with the uh, stage one, which everyone wants to do. This is kind of subjective. Uh, if you've got, well, say your mufflers. I, I happen to like my Reinhardt's. And I just have a K&N filter on the, uh, on the input. But uh, let me show you what I've got. So inside that cover is just a K&N air filter. For your stage one, you don't need to spend a lot of money. That K&N is huge and it works great. And it's, they molded it just for that, uh, for that cover. Okay, so I know some of these things are subjective. Um, I've had every kind of pipe imaginable. But I really love these Reinhardts. Uh, these don't even have the DBX uh, baffles. These are just standard baffles. But I do love them. Bars. Very subjective. Just find, you know, a set of bars that uh, you can live with. Mine are for uh, comfort because of uh, my uh, stage 4 arthritis in my shoulder. And I do quite a bit of searching to find uh, you know, a set of bars that would not uh, kill me. And the other subjective thing, of course, that I have on here is my Saddleman SDC seat, which I love more and more every day. All right, let's talk about a couple things that aren't so subjective. That is my... Uh, ultra cool lifetime oil filter. That oil filter uh, puts that oil through that, uh, that filter seven times faster than the uh, Harley paper ones and it has a uh, magnetic core so it picks up uh, any metal shavings that might happen inside your engine. If you want to keep that thing cool, you live in Florida or Texas or Arizona or it gets hot, this is a must. Now in my 2016 I had the uh, double fans that went with that for the oil cooler, but I'll get to that in a second. Okay, I'm hoping you can see this. That is my fueling vented dipstick. That is a lifesaver life saver for uh, your motor. This thing will keep all the oil out of your air filter and is the one thing that uh, that prevents the uh, oil sump issues. But it also keeps that oil right out of your air filter. And uh, I got no problem rubbing that thing up and hitting traffic. Um, and every time someone looks at my air filter and I get my oil changed, they can't believe how clean it is. It's really important to keep that out of your, uh, out of your engine. What it does to your pistons is unbelievably bad. Okay, so you can see my oil cooler here. On my 2016, I had the ultra cool setup with double fans, and that worked really good. But what I've just ordered for this one is the Harley version, because um, it hooks up to the bike and goes into the bike's wiring, and it, uh, it's triggered by temperature. But that is the uh, one thing left to do as far as, as, far as uh, upgrades for this bike. It'll make a huge difference in the summertime and traffic. Well, let's talk about heat. These are my mid-frame deflectors. They don't do much for uh, keeping the engine cool, although they work a little bit with my, uh, my other uh, deflector, but it's mostly to keep you from burning your leg. 
I would get these things right away. Over here is my deflector. See if I can get a shot of this. You can probably see it. It takes about 20% of the air, sends it up, and this is road glide specific, sends it up uh, over the tank for me, and it joins with the other air, and it does help uh, buffeting a bit. But I've checked this, and about 80% of the air goes right over the jugs. I mean, this thing creates a lot of damn airflow uh, that it normally wouldn't get. Okay, so if you're living in a high traffic area, in Florida, well, we're known for our rear end collisions down here. I set up three, uh, Cero 3D lighting because I definitely want to be seen here. You wouldn't believe how many rear end collisions there are from people with their cell phones. I find this to be very, very, very important. Even more important than loud pipes. Yeah, and you can see I've got uh, a bunch of lighting on the front too. I want to be seen uh, going down the highway. And the more lights I can get on this thing, the better. That's where your money should be sent, spent, is uh, safety. So in my humble opinion, I'm not a mechanic. Uh, I know a couple of great master mechanics though. And uh, there's a couple online that I watch. Um, and they kind of agree with me. These guys who are building these motors, a lot of them don't, don't know what they're doing in the first place. Um, but it's just not necessary. The 114 motor is just a great motor. And if you happen to have a 2020, like I do, let me tell you what else you have. You have the upgraded oil pump. The, uh, anything below a 2020, and I think it's the later 2019 models, you have the, uh, the upgraded oil pump. There were six different oil pumps that Harley made for the M8 motor. And uh, a couple of master mechanics I, I watch online, they're saying that the one in the 2020 and above is every bit as good as the SNS or the fueling. There's, there's no reason to upgrade it because it's already an upgrade. So if you're thinking about that uh, 131 and that 124, eh, think hard. If you're living in a place where there's heat, like Florida or Texas, you're probably better off just doing some heat mods, uh, like I did. Um, I never have problem uh, getting up uh, to traffic, merging in traffic. I just hit the throttle. So most of the time I don't even have to downshift. Uh, this motor's just got a ton of torque. Um, I think the problem with that 131 is uh, they built it for speed and the specs. But uh, it doesn't develop uh, that horsepower and that torque till about 4,000 RPMs, which is, to me, is just not acceptable. Uh, I, if I built a motor like that, I'd make sure the torque was down about 2,500 RPMs, like the Crush. 2,500 RPMs is uh, max torque on these things uh, and above. And I love that. You know, Jay Leno once said, uh, Horsepower sells cars, but uh, torque wins races. And the same can be said about motorcycles. So before you think about upgrades, think about what you really need. Think about what's gonna save your bike. Improve it, maybe some things that'll save you. See you next time.